Hi all, today we are going to discuss about measurement of three phase reactive power using only one watt meter. So this method can be used in three phase, whether it is three fire or four wire in both systems this can be used and only this is valid for the case of balanced load only not for unbalanced load. You will ask me using one watt meter anyway we can measure by connecting to any one phase. But problem is if the load is delta connected you will have only three terminals you don't have the access to the phase terminals. Generally only three terminals will get, come at your out, at the terminals. So in that case how to measure, so that we are going to see. So again in this there are two different ways in which this one watt meter can be connected to get the reactive power. So the first case we can only measure the reactive power. We are going to see one more way if you are connecting in that manner, we can measure both active as well as the reactive power. So first let us start with only measurement of reactive power using one watt meter method. So in this what we are doing going to do, the current coil is connected in one of the phase. Let us assume the current coil is connected in phase A. So here you have to remember the load is balanced. So all the phases have the same impedance. That means current passing in all the phases is same. So in this phase, the, for example, the current will be I1, which is nothing but equal to I. It is same in every phase. So now coming to the pressure coil, the pressure coil is connected between the remaining two phases. For example, in this case, I am connecting between phase two and phase three. That means phase two, I am taking positive. So this is connected here. Phase three, I am taking as the second terminal, it is connected to 3. That means this C is connected to 2 and V is connected to 3. That means what your pressure coil will measure? Pressure coil will measure the voltage between 2 and 3. That means this will be nothing but V2 minus V3. In that manner you can get it. So if you are seeing the phasor diagram, let us assume this is my V1. With respect to the V1, V2 lags behind by 120 degrees. Further V3 lags by 120 degrees. So I want to see the voltage that is coming across your pressure coil. Voltage across pressure coil is V23. So to calculate V23, I have to take V2 minus V3. So that's why I am taking opposite to V3, that is minus V3. So when you are taking opposite direction, what will happen? This will divide your entire thing, this entire thing, because total angle is 120, this angle will become 60 degrees. So now the resultant of V2 and minus V3, that will be V23. So this what it will do, it will further divide this angle by 30 degrees. That means this will become equal to 30 degrees. And what is this angle? This angle is 60 degrees. So total angle between V23 and V1, that will be equal to 30 plus 60, that is 90. And I1 is lagging behind V1 by an angle of 5 because your current coil is measuring I1. So we can tell that the watt meter reading that W I can write as V23 into current passing in the first phase that is I1 into cos of the angle in between V23 and I1. Because we know the line voltage is nothing but root 3 times of the phase voltage. So that's why I can write as root 3 times of phase voltage I am representing as V into phase current is I into cos of angle between V23 and I1. You can see angle between them. This is 30 plus 60. Total is 90, I have to subtract 5. So this will be cos 90 minus 5. So this will become root 3 times of V into I into sin 5. But we know 3 phase reactive power is nothing but 3 times of V into I into sin 5. But here we are getting as root 3 times of V. I have to simply multiply with root 3 to whatever is the value that is shown in your watt meter. So whatever is the watt meter reading, you have to multiply with root 3 times. That gives your total reactive power consumed by your load. So there is one more way in which we can connect. So in this case, we can measure both active as well as reactive power using single watt meter. But here only one extra thing will be, we need one two way switch. So in this case, what will be there? Your current coil is connected in any one of the phases. Let us assume it is connected in phase one. Here the current is nothing but I1, which I am taking as the phase current I. So now coming to the pressure coil, the pressure coil is connected between the phase A or phase one and the second side terminal, it is connected to a switch, center of a switch. This is a two-way switch. It can either connect to this side or this side. Whichever side we want, we can connect in that side. So either you can connect in this side, that means terminal A or terminal B. So first we will connect to A. That means your pressure coil will measure voltage between 1 and 3. So when you connect to the B side, then it will measure between 1 and 2. Current is same but the voltage which you are connecting is changing. So understand that I am again going to the phasor diagram V1, V2, V3. The angle between them is 120 degrees. So now when it is connected to side A, it is measuring the value of V1 
it is connected to 3 v13 that will be equal to v1 minus v3 so v1 is there v3 I have taken in the opposite direction so what this will do this entire 120 degrees it will divide into 60 and 60 so i have to take v1 plus minus v3 so that will come in the center v13 this will further divide into half that means 60 divided by half it will come as 30 degrees so i am assuming my current is lagging behind the voltage by some angle phi so what is this angle between v13 and i1 this will be 30 minus phi that means when you are connecting to side a the voltage is v13 current is i1 and cos of the angle between v13 and i1 that will be 30 minus phi same thing i have represented here w1 is equal to v13 i1 into cos of the angle between these two is 30 minus phi v13 is the line voltage that's why this will be root 3 times of the phase value so now i am connecting to switch b if i am connecting to b what will be the voltage measured voltage v1 it is connected to second side 2 so v12 is nothing but v1 minus v2 so v2 have taken an opposite direction that means this will divide into two parts 60 60 so then the resultant of these two will further divide into 30 that means the angle between v1 and v12 that will be equal to 30 and i1 is lagging behind this v1 by some angle phi so total angle between v12 and i1 will be 30 plus phi that means when you are connecting to switch b or b side the power measured will be root 3 times of v into i into cos 30 plus phi so what i am doing i am just taking the sum of these two cases whichever readings are there when connected to a plus when connected to b so this will become root 3 times of vi which is common in these two so one is cos 30 minus phi another one is cos 30 plus phi we know cos a minus b plus cos a plus b that is equal to 2 cos a cos b so this i can write as 2 cos 30 into cos phi so cos 30 is nothing but root 3 by 2 so 2 2 will cancel out root 3 multiplied by root 3 will become 3 into v into i into cos phi this is nothing but three phase active power here you can see we are measuring even the active power easily just using a single watt meter and this is can be used in the case where neutral point is not available so particularly for delta connection it is so much useful directly we can measure the active power and balance the delta connection using single watt meter only so similar is the case if you are taking difference of the watt meter readings so this will be root 3 times of vi into cos 30 minus phi minus cos 30 plus phi i am doing the difference of these two so this is of the form cos a minus b minus cos a plus b that will be 2 sin a sin b so 2 sin 30 into sin phi sin 30 is 1 by 2 so this will become root 3 into vi into sin phi so now we know the three phase reactive power is three times of vi sin phi so simply multiply root 3 multiplied by w1 minus w2 that gives my three phase reactive power that means using a single watt meter i am measuring both active as well as reactive power so if you want such case what is the requirement you need the normal one watt meter along with that i need a two-way switch by which you can connect to any one of the phases two readings will be taken and then we will add them to give the active power difference multiplied by root 3 will give the reactive power or if you don't want to do that only connect in only one circuit then current coil is connected in any one phase pressure coil is connected between the remaining two phases so in that case whatever the reading is shown by your watt meter multiplied by root 3 that gives your reactive power i hope how the measurement of reactive power and balanced three phase three wire system using only one watt meter is completely clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer to your queries from there thank you thank you very much